Hey everyone, Ruben here again with another educational video brought to you by TenWeb, your number one source for agency growth. Today's video is all about agency sales and we're super happy to be joined by Nathan Reimke Vu, a sales and marketing specialist and a TenWeb enthusiast. Let's go! Hello Nathan, thank you for joining hey. us. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm amazing, man. It's a new day, new opportunities, so I'm excited. Let's, let's, do, let's, go, let's do this. Awesome, awesome. Now, um, can you just uh, give us a little introduction of your uh, experience in sales and marketing? What do you do? For sure. So basically, I run a variety of different companies. Uh, a lot of them are in the dental space. A lot of them, I build a bunch of websites for people in the dental space, also in the photography space. Um, I've been passionate about sales and marketing for a long time. And, and when I found 10Web, uh, I was I was really excited about it. And the main reason why was because of how fast it was, number one, running on the Google Cloud, right? And how easy it was for me to push my website over to 10Web. So that's honestly the reason why I'm here today is, is because of how easy the platform makes it for me to build websites. And as you and I both know, like when we're building websites, speed matters. Um, and, you know, having a platform that I can easily invite my other contractors in to build websites collaboratively with me, where, you know, it's super easy, super fast for them to do that is just changes everything. And also like the service, you know, has been incredible. But for me personally, like, you know, I've been developing inside of WordPress, you know, websites since I was maybe 15 years old. So that's like what, 10 years ago right now. And, you know, seeing all the different changes uh, has been, a journey, right? It's gotten a lot easier now than it used to be 10 years ago. And um, and yeah, that's really a little bit about me. You know, I've always loved sales and marketing and a good, a big piece of sales and marketing is, is your website rock solid? Does it load fast? Uh, and can you make edits quickly? So, you know, that's kind of where I'm coming from in this, in this scenario. And uh, I'm super excited to be talking with you guys today because um, I want to spread the message of how great this product is and, and help you guys in any way I can. Awesome. We have a couple of questions for you uh, related to uh, the sales lifecycle, right? You can see on, on your screen uh, the tiles of eight categories. Okay, let's reveal the question. So the question is, what's your sales prospecting strategy? Briefly. For sales prospecting, this is one of the most important parts in your business. If you're a web designer, if you're a web developer, if you're using 10Web and you want to get more clients, or even if you're just like, no matter who you are, you need to prospect for new customers. My way of prospecting for new customers is fairly simple. I love using LinkedIn. LinkedIn is one of the best places for me personally to prospect. The reason why is because I, I can use tools like LinkedIn Sales Navigator to find all sorts of different demographics, uh, whether I'm targeting dentists, whether I'm targeting headshot photographers, whether I'm targeting, like anybody who's on LinkedIn cares about their business. Otherwise they wouldn't be on LinkedIn, right? And that's not the case for other platforms. That's not the case, you know, for Instagram, people might be on Instagram for other reasons, um, but with LinkedIn, LinkedIn's a business focused platform. So I know the people there nine times out of 10 are qualified, they have money, right? And they're fairly easy to contact. So when you're building your prospecting pipeline, you really want to think about, I need to find a group of people, right? I need to find a group of people that number one, have money. If they don't have money, why are you going to reach out to them? Okay. Number one, they have money. Number two, number two, you can find their contact information. If you can't find their contact information, there's no way you're ever going to be able to do any type of prospecting activity. And then number three, are they the type of people that would be willing to make a decision with you? Right. right. Um, so can you find their information? Can you reach out to them? And can you create a logical case about why you need to build their website or why you need to do whatever it is that you're doing? Okay. So deep down nuts and bolts, what my prospecting process looks like is I go on LinkedIn. Okay. Let's say I'm looking for dentists, right? I want dentists to build websites for, I have a couple examples of websites that are perfect for dentists. And I'm like, you know what? I need to find dentists. Number one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go on LinkedIn sales navigator, right? I'm going to go in, I'm going to type dentists in a certain area, right? I'm going to go, I'm going to see that list of dentists that come up and I'm going to go ahead and be like, Hey, I'm going to use a tool. Like there's a couple of tools I can use. I'm just going to shout them out here just so it's valuable for everyone. So you really understand how I do this. I use um, a tool called signal hire. It's like 50 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. And I also use a tool called um, seamless AI. It's like 150 bucks a month. Okay. Yes. It's expensive. I understand, but here's the reality. You can use these tools 
to get the direct phone numbers and emails of every single person that you see on LinkedIn when you're searching through Sales Navigator. So I can go into LinkedIn, go onto Sales Navigator, and literally within 15 minutes, have a list of 1,500 people who are perfect in my target demographic, and I can start calling them, I can start texting them, I can do all that kind of thing. And now we move over from prospecting, right? Just finding our prospects. So now how do we reach out to them? Right. So yeah, I guess that also answers the, uh, the question about uh, researching, I guess it can be combined, right? Prospecting, researching. I have, I, have more, I have more content for the other things as well. So I, awesome. I just tried to tee up contacting for you just there. Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, here's the question. What is the best way to make first contact with the prospect? So once you've finished your prospecting cycle, right? And you've gone through LinkedIn, you've, you've boiled down Sales Navigator, you've, you've found you know, your top 100, top 200 prospects, that you're like, these people are ready, these people are all financially capable, and I can contact them. Once you've finished that process and you have a list, now your question is, how do I reach out to them? Okay. Great. I know for me in the dental industry, there's a few things that work phenomenally well. Um, number one thing that works phenomenally well is figure out a way to get the direct phone number of the dentist owner himself. Nine times out of 10, he's going to be the decision maker um, for things like this. Now you have to understand that dentists in, in this specific, this is a niche that I, I know very well, just because I worked in one uh, for five, six years. Um, so I'll, I'll just give you a little bit of background. That way you know exactly how to contact this type of, these type of people. They're busy. They own a business. They're busy. They don't have time for you, right? So you have to overcome that. And what I found is the people who are harder to get to are way easier to sell. The harder they are to like get in front of, the harder they are to get a meeting with, the easier it is to actually sell them something. Okay. So what I'll do personally is I'll call them up and like, Hey, look, Dr. Jim, I understand you're super busy. I would never expect for, for you to take up any of my time or for me to take up any of your time. If it wasn't hundred percent worth it, but let me ask you this. Can I send you a $50 gift card? Can I send you a hundred dollar gift card for an hour or 30 minutes of your time? And I can just show you what I want to do. Like show you how this certain thing can really improve your practice from your customer experience perspective, from your acquisition perspective. Would it be worth a hundred bucks for me to take 30 minutes? And nine times out of 10, they'll be like, sure, I'll, I'll take a I'll take hundred bucks. Literally, like that will genuinely work because, and once you get on that call and you have a very tight um, you know, pitch, what we'll talk about later, uh, they're easy to sell. They're easy to sell. The hardest part is getting in front of them. So that's how I, that's what my strategy is when it comes to contacting. And you'll, you'll notice that I'm reaching out to people who are qualified. So like, you know, I'm not going to just do this for anyone, but for that specific market, that's how I love to contact. So in summary, text on the phone, dial their cell phone number, send them a follow-up text. Hey, it's Nathan, Dr. Jim. I was just on your website. I thought it would be great for us to connect. Um, and you know, you do your, like your first contact. Um, and then we go on to the next stage, which is actually doing some research. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much. That was a lot of information. <laughs> so, and, and it actually was, a, was an interesting segue to the next uh, stage, which is qualifying the lead, right? So here's, right. The, here's the question. What is the number one question you ask that qualifies or disqualifies the lead? That's actually a really good question. So when, you're, when you are, are talking to someone, right? The, the, what I like to do, what I like to do, let's say I've been talking to them for maybe 10, 15 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. I'll ask them a couple of questions that kind of give me a gauge as to where they are in the process, because that's going to tell me, is this worth my time to keep pursuing or is this just not worth my time and I need to move on, right? And the, the questions that I will ask will be something like, hey, Dr. Jim, um, you know, I've shown you a bunch of stuff right now. Is this something that you really want to get working on or is this something that you just don't have time for whatsoever or i'll ask them in a different way and i'll adjust it depending on who i'm talking to uh to really fit that scenario but i'll say hey on a scale of one to ten like one being you think this is you know a terrible idea and ten being you think this is the most genius idea and you think you need to do it right away where are we at right and mm -hmm. i'll get a i'll get a gauge of where where he's at Right. And then if, if he says, oh, you know, I'm a seven or an eight, I'll be like, what is it? What else do I need to show you? Right. Um, to to make it an eight. And before the meeting itself, while I'm in the research stage, 
right? I want to qualify the lead. I can, there's a certain amount of qualifying that you can do before you even talk to them, right? So you can do research on their social media channels. You can do research on their website right now. You can do research on their business. You can do research on, hey, do they, do they have any publications that are talking about their practice? You can do a bunch of research to really qualify a lot. And you want to use that contextual information when you're talking to them. That's really important because that's going to help you. Uh, it's going to help you when you're making the proposal. When you're asking for the business, it's going to help you when you're when you're um, demoing your product, demoing your website, pitching. It's going to help you all across the thing. So, like researching and qualifying, a ton of that happens before you even talk to them. So that's that's just my process, though. Stick around for part two.